Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about a Christmas gift to you, which is a rifle that I put off for way too long to talk about, um, and that is my Knight's Armament Mod 2 CQB. This is a workhorse. This is my go-to rifle for anything. So let's get into it. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to share you guys an opportunity to support the channel. Um, the link is in the description for my web store for some merchandise. I designed these this year and I am uh, trying to get rid of the uh, remaining 2020 date stickers. Uh, this is limited edition, never going to do them again. So if you feel like you want to support the channel and support my content, uh, please check out the link um, below and get you some uh, limited edition stickers. So when it comes to talking about the AR-15, the name of the game um, for the past, you know, however long you want to look at it, has been Knight's Armament. Um, really, uh, this kind of get, turns into like a uh, fanboy type deal, but um, starting with the Eugene Stoner days, uh, Knight's Armament has really been the pioneer or the pinnacle of the AR-15 system. And I really think that they do a lot of things amazingly. So um, full disclosure, this is my personal rifle. You know, Knight's Armament is not sending me rifles, which, please, if you guys are watching this, <laughs> but um, this is my per personal rifle, um, so there is no, you know, financial backing behind this um, other than my own fangirling of Knight's Armament, basically. And I want to go into this rifle and talk about some things that kind of justify the uh, sort of fangirl nature and kind of explain some features um, so you can consider purchasing your own Knight's Armament rifle in the future. So the AR-15 has basically been the same for, you know, 50, 60 years, however long it's been since the Vietnam days. Um, direct impingement, rotating bolt, um, you know, it, there really hasn't been any, you know, sort of like um, huge technological developments um, to the AR-15. Um, and that's what Knight's Armament tried to do with the Mod 2 system. So when I'm talking about Mod 2, um, Knight's Armament has, you know, that, that's their proprietary term. But when I talk about the Mod 2, that is going to mean some changes to the AR-15 system that they've made to, you know, enhance reliability, longevity, um, and, you know, effectiveness over time. So when I'm talking about the Mod 2, um, the Knight's Armament Mod 2 comes in various links. In front of me is the Mod 2 CQB. So the CQB is going to be an 11 and um, they also offer 14 and a half and 16 and uh, 16 inches and then I think the LPR is 18 inches Don't quote me on that. Um, I am not particular to long guns, but as far as the Knight's Arm at CQB mod 2 um, That's basically in this configuration in front of me. So it's going to be an 11 and a half inch barrel um, They're ambidextrous lower. So we'll talk about the lower features in a little bit um, and then so I'm gonna be honest This is absolutely not in any condition stock um, you know, I have made a lot of changes to this over time, but I'll show you a picture of the, you know, default 11 and half inch mod 2 from the factory and you can kind of see how it comes in the box. So before we go into the rifle and talk about some specifics with the rifle, I wanted to kind of share to you guys why this configuration is how I'm running it. So this has kind of been a constant, you know, evolution of my rifle. Um, over, you know, um, several months of shooting it, um, several classes. Um, one of the, the best classes I've learned from so far is JBS, uh, Mark Smith, JBS. I'll do another plug because he has taught me so much about, you know, setting up the rifle, running the rifle, and things like that. So if you're wanting to check out some training courses, highly recommend JBS Training Group. Um, but basically, this has evolved over time. So Starting from the back, the biggest evolution that I've had is the riser. So the risers, they're starting to, to come back around because people are realizing their utility um, in the fact that you can elevate your cheek to, you know, uh, to work alongside of your elevated optics. So where they came from is to use with night vision. So, you know, I use my night vision a lot. Uh, passive aiming is super cool. Sometimes we don't use lasers. Sometimes we just use, um, you know, passive aiming. So that gives you an option. Um, and it's just another failsafe. You know, a lot of guys use their uh, backup iron sights as a failsafe. Um, so being able to use passive aiming alongside your, you know, uh, your active aiming solution is a really cool option there. So going forward from my LaRue riser, uh, we're going to be talking about the Law Tactical Folder. I'm not going to go super in depth because I want to do a video talking about it because it's awesome. Uh, but it does allow for the ability to break the rifle down and transport it in a case. 
which is super cool. Um, and just, you know, being able to deploy it rapidly and super robust, super solid. Um, check them out if you haven't. Something that's kind of new for me is the Badger Ordnance charging handle. Um, I typically ran with the Geisley ACH or, you know, airborne charging handle, um, but the Badger Ordnance charging handle has been really nice. Um, these, uh, these tangs on the charging handle, really pronounced, um, you know, I like it. I've been running it so far. Um, I haven't made the complete switch because they're kind of expensive, but as far as charging handles go, Badger Ordnance is pretty solid. Up top, my uh, Knight's Armament Skyscraper. As you can tell, I have an EOTech flip to side. Um, Aimpoint does make a flip to side. I'm not partial to either or. Um, I just have more experience with the EOTech. Going back to Mark Smith at JBS, um, he taught me, he drilled into my head about holdovers with elevated optics. So with the uh, Knight's Armament Skyscraper on this rifle, um, you're gonna have a pretty big height over bore difference when you're talking about close up. So if you are you know, thinking that these, these optic setups are really cool, um, which they are, but you need to get some experience as far as you know, where you need to shoot at a certain yardage, you know, uh, it's gonna change and it's even dramatic, or it's even more pronounced when you're talking about higher optics. So uh, the skyscraper is super cool, especially if you're using night vision, you know, like if you're using night vision, it's either this or the Unity pretty much, that's like the name of the games as far as elevated optics. Uh, but the skyscraper is super cool. Going forward, I have the Knight's Armament hand stop. So this is not really, you know, a hand, uh, like a grip, but it is a place to index your hand uh, when you're bringing out the rifle. It's really nice, uh, it has some curves, directly mounts to the key mod or M lock. Um, so, you know, that that's what I have on it. Um, I used to have a Surefire M300 on this side, but it broke in an unfortunate incident when I was trying to remove my welded on Surefire suppressor. Um, so I am currently without a weapon light. Um, I think it's somewhere back there, but yeah. So I have my PEG-15 up top for night vision use. And then on the side, actually, I have something really cool, which is the Knight's Armament Barrier Stop. So the Barrier Stop is being is useful for when you're you know digging into barriers like wooden or metal barriers, you're trying to make a stable um, you know point to aim off of. Uh, so the barrier stop is really cool, but it also doubles as a QD sling mount. So yeah, that's cool. Um, also, Edgar Sherman designed sling. Um, once again, I'm going to do a separate video over that. Uh, I don't want to go too in depth with this video, but uh, spoiler alert, they're awesome. So not shown is my Surefire RC2. I primarily shoot suppressed, uh, but like I said, I try to take it off and it was too much of a pain to not shoot while it's off. So I currently don't have a suppressor on it right now but I primarily use it suppressed. The Mod 2 CQB is amazing suppressed, which we will get into the operating system now. So before I take the rifle apart because it's very dirty, I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the things that I can't really show you very well. Um, I'm gonna use some pictures to uh, demonstrate what I'm talking about, but basically underneath the rail is where kind of the Mod 2 system begins to separate from the typical AR-15. So the typical AR-15 has a gas block attached to the barrel, either by a pin or set screws, and then it has a port in the barrel which actually directs gas back into the chamber, which cycles the action. In that system, there's a lot of error for um, you know, tolerances. So gas can leak through either the hole around the barrel, um, the pin can you know, back off. There's a lot of uh, rooms for error and also rooms for inefficiencies as far as when you're talking about um, you know, pressure deviations with uh, rifle rounds. Um, you can have low spec or high spec pressure. Um, you know, you, you enter a lot of uh, reliability issues when you're talking about the standard Air 15. So the Montu gas system kind of seals itself by using a castle nut similar to the end of the Air 15, uh, which also secures onto the barrel by threads. Um, and that kind of locks down the uh, gas block, which provides a really reliable seal, um, doesn't have any gas leakage, um, and the gas tube actually has a flange on it, um, similar to you know high pressure valves, or um, it, it's really kind of like industrial looking when you look at it, um, but it has a flange on it, it has a nut, um, so the gas tube is actually sealed to the gas block, and it really has minimal leakage, and therefore, you can fine tune the gas system because you're not having a lot of gas escape through the gas block and therefore the rifle can be less recoiling, um, it's just smoother shooting and it's also more reliable when you're you know, talking about deviation between um, rifle cartridges or you know, adding a suppressor. 
So just to kind of reiterate the fact that it's really ceiling is when you have a Mark 18 and you take off your PEC 15, if you look at the bottom, it will be completely black, I promise. Uh, just because if you put a lot of rounds through it, there will be a lot of gas leakage through the gas block and it will you know, go onto any surfaces around it. Uh, the Mod 2 system is really efficient and therefore you know, it, it uh, just refines the gas impulse, you know, the recoil impulse of the rifle. So one thing I can show you guys myself is if I take apart the bolt carrier group, we can talk about the improvements that Knight's Armament has made to the actual bolt carrier group and the bolt. So I'm going to go ahead and take it apart um, and show you guys kind of the internals of the bolt. Uh, but I'm going to put on gloves just because it's disgusting. I haven't cleaned it in a while. Um, so here we go. So this is really the heart of the uh, Mod 2 CQB, um, the bolt carrier group. So I'll go ahead and take it apart, which it's basically the exact same as a standard AR-15. So to better help iterate the differences between the Knight's Armament Mod 2 bolt and then a standard AR-15 bolt, I have a just standard night or it's a Colt bolt. So I'll go ahead and take this one apart and kind of show you guys the differences. So the cam pin is where things start to get a little different. So as you can tell, the Knights over here has a smaller cam pin versus the Colt. Uh, so the reasoning behind this is that with this smaller cam pin size, you get a smaller cam pin hole in the bolt, which I'll put next to each other. So in typical AR-15s, a lot of the times the failures come from a crack developing on the side right here. So Knight's Armament aims to reduce that chance uh, because they, you know, reduce the diameter of the cam pin. So that's just one of the improvements in their longevity um, mindset, you know, reducing failures of the system overall. On the Knight's Armament, you can see that the bolt, or I'm sorry, the extractor actually has this lobster tail looking deal. Um, whereas the extractor spring over here, you know, it's just a straight uh, line. So there's one extractor spring in the Colt bolt, uh, whereas there is two extractor springs in the Knight's Armament one. Um, there, you know, there's a lot of uh, research showing that, you know, they're, they're under a lot of stress. Uh, so if you have two, you can reduce the amount of stress that one experiences. You know, I'm not a mechanical engineer. Obviously, I won't pretend like it, uh, but that's their idea in that. So another claim to fame that Knight Sarmut has is their reducing of the uh, bolt head fractures. So on the Colt, you have a really like a square uh, versus the you know rounded corners of the Knight Sarmut bolt. Um, so typically Air 15 bolts they will shear on the lug. Um, that's where their common failure point is. But the Knight Sarmut um, it reduces that by rounding the lugs, strengthening them. Um, you know that's that is the face of the E3 bolt. So with everything discussed, I want to go ahead and talk about, you know, why I chose to devote, you know, a lot of money and a lot of time to my Knight's Armament rifle. Um, Knight's Armament, you know, like I said, has been, you know, pioneering for a long time. You know, they're constantly pushing the envelope as far as, um, you know, innovating in the marketplace. Um, I really, uh, you know, I really resound with their mission. You know, they're, they're kind of, you know, the last cool American gun company that's, you know, still thriving. Um, so... Uh, without getting too fangirly, I think that, you know, their products are, they speak for themselves as far as their quality. Um, you know, it's not like a uh, boutique rifle, you know, like a Nevesky or Hodge or anything like that, where, you know, everything is, you know, handcrafted, hand fit and everything like that. Um, this is a factory production gun. So they, you know, they produce a lot of them. But that being said, there's a lot of, you know, R&D development and stuff like that that goes into these rifles that a lot of people don't understand. And so when you talk about the price tag on something, a lot of people don't understand that price tags include, you know, the, the company's, you know, innovation in their own products. So uh, with that being said, the Knight's Armament Rifle is probably one of my favorites. You know, if I were to, you know, grab one gun out of the safe to do anything, you know, that I want, it would be this rifle. So I take it hunting, uh, I go to classes with it. So if you're looking for a do-it-everything rifle, you can't go wrong with the Knight's Armament Rifle. Um, their SR25s, their SR15s, anything they make, you know, if you, if you want it to run, it probably will. So that being said, I hope that this was a, uh, a cool video. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you might have, you know, hopefully if you're lucky and if you were good enough, you might have one of these bad boys sitting under your Christmas tree. 
um, but you know I, I wasn't good enough to get another so we'll we'll check next year so uh, without further ado I'll see you guys in a uh, couple of weeks and have a happy holiday um, stick in there and we're coming to 2021 thank goodness let's make it a good one